regard to the club team, I don't think that there was really much of an issue with initiative. Our president very rarely made decisions in fear of failure. I think he also encouraged the rest of us to be expressive on the field and be confident in our decision making on the field. So we sh a player who plays with fear is never going to be as good as a player who is not afraid to mess up. And someone who has strong initiative will do that creative move or make that difficult pass. And if it doesn't work out the first time, they'll try it a second time. If it doesn't work out a second time, they might consider doing something a little bit safer, but they also might try it a third time and it might work and it might be a game deciding factor. So overall, I feel that our president did a good job with establishing this morale of don't play with fear, play with confidence and have good judgment in your decisions, obviously, but also don't always play within your comfort zone. All right, moving on to intenseness. Coach Wooden described this pyramid block as having the mental toughness to prevail in the midst of adversity. So when things go wrong, in order to get through those things and to be successful, you have to have intentness, this mentality, and establish it within your players because Without it, you are going to succumb to those adversities and you're going to falter mentally because you don't you lack that sense of intentness and that, that strong mentality to persevere. I think that intentness was something that we lacked a bit as a team because we did very well throughout the season. We didn't lose a single game. We went undefeated. So by the time we got to Nationals, we had very rarely been put in a situation where we were down and we had to come back. So during those situations, intentness is vital for us to have any chance of reaching success in that game. And there were a few games within the regional tournament where we found ourselves down quickly on and we did not react very well. Um, if anything, we kind of collapsed a bit we started making more mistakes and we just lost our overall mentality of playing with calm and with, with the normal consistency that we had been throughout the season. So whether or not this was a direct result of our president not establishing that is a little bit too hard to tell. I think that it was more so just the fact that we had not really faced much adversity throughout the season. So when we finally did in the regional tournament, it was like we hadn't had that experience or that that reaction, or that requirement to react to the adversity. So as a result, we didn't we didn't we ended up losing the game. Okay, so now we are moving on to the third level of the pyramid of success, starting with condition and Coach Wooden emphasized that this is not purely a physical condition, um, but a team and a player must be in good emotional as well as mental and physical condition. And this is established through the typical suicides for the physical aspect, but also training your mind to be prepared for anything that comes your way, as well as being willing and able to learn each day and improve each day wasn't any issues with physical condition on our team. Um, I think that was one of the reasons we had an advantage during the season is that we were just more fit. Um, based on the level of, of intensity at each of our training sessions and we would our president would also implement conditioning within the, within the drills that we would do so that we would have that upper hand. Um, so I think that it, it definitely was good on his part to establish that within our trainings because ultimately it helped us to have that upper hand against our opponent. As far as the moral conditioning, I don't think that there was much our president necessarily did to improve upon that for each of us as players. However, I would say that our moral condition was only fair because, like I said in the, in, when, when regarding the, the most previous building block, I feel that when faced with adversity, our moral condition was not as strong because we just hadn't been put in that scenario.
All right, next up we have skill, and Coach Wooden placed this at the heart of the pyramid for a reason, because at the end of the day, if you are trying to accomplish a task, whether it be individually or with a team, you need to have a baseline of skill to be successful. And I don't think that any team really can operate at full potential or, or be, expect to find success in a task if there aren't if there isn't already a baseline of skill present throughout all of the members. I think that this is one of our strongest suits for the club team is that the reason we were able to find so much success throughout the season and, and go unbeaten and reach the regional tournament was because we were all very skillful players. We had lots of playing experience and each time we would go out and train there would be more players that were there would be some players that were more skillful than others which would naturally force those less skillful players to adapt and improve upon their skills so skills was never something that was lacking in our team and i think that's why we were so successful in the season moving on to the last pyramid block in the third level we have team spirit i think this is one of the more obvious ones again and coach wouldn't emphasize that in order for a team to be successful, each of its members must be willing to sacrifice something, whether it be their body or their stats, their stat level, and if it, it ultimately improves the team as a whole. And this is this kind of creates that cohesive unit and ties into a lot of the other blocks that players who are focused on improving their own individual statistics as opposed to the team's statistics will end up hurting the team at some point down the line. They could be a really skillful player and, and a very valuable asset to the team, but if their entire focus is achieving individual rewards, then the team is going to suffer because at some point they're going to try and, and go for the glory and miss out, and, and the team's going to suffer as a result rather than making that extra pass to an open player. You know, so... Someone who has team spirit recognizes that in order for the team to excel, they must put aside their own individual desires and, and sacrifice those for the team. On the club team, I don't think that there was really anyone in, in particular that stood out as being someone who selfishly kind of put forth their individual statistics ahead of the team. I think all of us were very consistent and in agreement with our goals and whatever we could do to help our team's chances of reaching those goals we would do so I think this was this was well established by our president in the beginning that if you're going on and dribbling and trying to do everything yourself we're not going to be successful so I don't think this was an issue I think that overall all of us had the team's interests at heart before our own Okay, we're approaching the final building blocks of the pyramid and starting off with poise. This is another one that I feel is most important to the pyramid. It ties along in with self-control and without poise you will never have full self-control, but Coach Wooden in particular had an unmatched poise. People would recount that they could be down, I, I remember at one point, I forget who it was in the book, but they recounted that they were down 18-2 at the beginning of the game, and Coach Wooden wouldn't be you know, stressing or, or yelling and, and being emotionally unstable because he recognized that if he was poised, the rest of his team would remain poised, and they would they would end up coming back. And a lot of times they did. I think they only ended up losing one of those games, which was close. But there were a few times where his team would start start off behind. But because he remained a poised attitude on the sidelines, his team responded particularly well to that. And they ended up being successful. In regards to the club team, I think our president established from a very early stage that he was an intense character. And he had had a fun side but also he expected everyone to be serious about playing and improving so while that was prevalent I feel that at times just as I said that at times he would lose some self-control his poise was not perfect like coach Wooden's would have been or like coach Wooden's was and I think that that could have played a factor in some of those games where 
in the regional final, we did face adversity. He didn't maintain that sense of poise that provided us with the confidence that everything was going to be okay, that we just had to continue to play our game, and maybe we, we suffered as a result. All right, after poise, we have confidence. And Coach Wooden described this as having the self-belief that your preparation has been exquisite. It's the best it could possibly be, and you are ready to take on whatever endeavor you have been preparing for. And he also stressed that there's a distinct difference between confidence and arrogance. So teams and players shouldn't go into a game assuming that they are already superior and will win against a team that has historically proven to be less talent talented. Um, this will invite inevitable failure because a team is going to play differently with arrogance than they would with confidence. A, a confident team knows that they are, are very well prepared for the task at hand. An arrogant team thinks that they are too good for the task at hand. So they might do things that they normally wouldn't and as a result be punished by the other team because the other team might play with better confidence. As we qualified for the regional tournament in um, Virginia, we definitely went in with confidence based off of the fact that we had just had an unbeaten season. We were training really well, training hard, but we were also placed in the group of death, which in soccer terms just means that we had the most competitive group before the knockout rounds. And as a result of this, we did not go into any of our games assuming victory, which I believe helped us because, again, just as, as I just stated, Teams who go in cocky and who think that they're better than the team and that they're going to easily win will not perform at their normal level. And we went into every single game knowing that we had a fierce competitor and that we were going to have to play hard to win. And that brings us to our final building block in Coach Wooden's Pyramid of Success, which is competitive greatness. Wooden describes this as being having a genuine love for the battle, for the competition. It's not defined by defeat or success, but rather a person's desire to compete in the first place. So if you achieve competitive greatness as a leader, you are prepared for whatever is going to be thrown at you and you invite the battle, you invite the grit, and that's the part that you love most. Not even, you don't love winning more than you love the fight. So if you're able to establish competitive greatness in your leadership style, you will very likely reach success. And those under you will recognize the competitive greatness. And if they're able to establish it, again, you're going to be successful. And this is the point that Coach Wooden makes as the final most important aspect of his pyramid. So, as I mentioned earlier in the video, um, at the very end I was going to analyze whether or not each of the pyramids were prevalent in my experience with the club soccer team in that first year and the success that we endured as well as the loss that we endured. And I believe that several of the aspects were well implemented, however, the ones that we were lacking resulted in us not winning the regional tournament. and. It just goes to show that every single block must be prevalent in your experience if you want to reach ultimate success. And the ultimate success would have been winning the regional tournament, going to nationals, and winning the national tournament. So it's evident that in order for us to reach our end goal and be successful in winning or even reaching the national tournament, we need to ensure that each of these pyramid blocks are operating in full capacity. And as all signs point to us having a season in the fall, I'm excited to step into a leadership position of either the president or the vice president and focus on implementing each of these blocks that I've learned from Coach Wooden because I think it's going to provide us with the best tools for success and reaching the national tournament and, and winning the national tournament would be one of the greatest achievements and accomplishments of, of my soccer career. So if I'm able to lead my team to that, it will provide me with an unmatched sense of confidence and just accomplishment overall. But yeah, that pretty much concludes my deliverable. I'm extremely grateful for 
the opportunity to learn from Coach Wooden, and I feel that I've gained an extensive amount of knowledge that can be applied to my leadership tactics moving forward for the rest of my life, as well as in the immediate future for our upcoming season. I can't wait to work with some of my teammates in implementing each aspect of the pyramid into our preparation, and hopefully we can be successful in reaching our national tournament goal and ultimately winning the national tournament. So thanks for listening.